Fallout is well known for its unique world, a place where greasers drive their nuclear-powered cars, and a robot will help you take in the milk that the milkman dropped off. It's as if our culture got locked in the 1950s, but technology kept powering forward. There's a term for this style. It's known as retro-futurism, and can be summed up as what people some time ago thought that the future was actually going to be like. So in the case of Fallout, it's what people in the 1950s thought the 2077 was going to be like. Or more accurately, what people in 1997 thought people in the 1950s thought 2077 was going to be like. That being said, it is based in our world to some degree, just slightly different. Something happened in the world of Fallout to cause them to get locked in the good old days of Leave it to Beaver and McCarthyism. This event, or when this event happened, is known as the Divergence. Although many have tried, nobody's been able to pin down exactly what it was. That is, until today. In order to get started, we first need to lay out exactly what we're looking for and how we'll know when we found it. Imagine a timeline that started long ago. Each time we pass an event, both our world and the world of Fallout experience it. However, the second either reality sees an event that the other does not, the line splits in two. Never to fully combine again. That exact point is the divergence, and that's what we're hunting for. Now, there can be shared occurrences, but that is simply the two lines intersecting for a brief moment before returning to their separate ways. Just because the Vietnam War occurs in both timelines, doesn't mean that the divergence has to get pushed forward to 1965. Pandora's box has already been opened, and there's no way to put everything back in order. The only way to truly go about this is to start at the end and work our way back, visiting the major events along the way until we find the exact point it all went wrong. Obviously, this split does not occur in the future, so we can start the hunt today in the year 2023. There are many things that we associate very heavily with Fallout that are yet to come into existence. We're 14 years away from the Mr. Handy robot hitting the market, and we won't see Nuka-Cola until 2044. A little boy named Robert House is celebrating his third birthday this year, and Hubis Comics out of Washington, D.C. is starting to pick up some steam. One of the most fundamental differences between our reality and Fallout's is that the United States doesn't exist in its current form, or the form we've come to know it. 50 states have been reorganized under 13 large commonwealths. These commonwealths serve as a middleman between the states and the federal government. This mix-up occurred in 1969, which can allow us to shift our view back on the timeline quite a bit. This is a pretty major year, as in July, for the first time in the history of the human race, man has set foot on the moon. Which history? Both, actually. As we encounter our first intersection of the timelines. The names of who involved are a little different, but the lining up of such major world events is not something we can look past. As I said before, however, just because the lines cross doesn't mean our job is done. Just as quickly as they come together, they separate. We must march on. We encounter many more small crossovers on the way to our next major plot point, the biggest of these intersections being the United States' involvement in the Vietnam War. We also come across some near misses, as in Fallout's 1961. In May, the United States puts the first man in space. Captain Carl Bell is his name, and he's a lot less communist than the first man in space in our timeline, who was actually a Soviet. The Soviet managed to barely beat out Bell as he made it off the ground in April of 1961. The Soviet, whose name was Yuri Gagorin, also had a much happier ending as Bell's capsule crashed when returning to Earth. He was killed in the accident. Nineteen forty seven laboratory in New Jersey. It's two days before Christmas, but a small group of researchers are demoing something that they have been toiling away at for some time. They work for Bell Labs, which has a long history of world-changing inventions. To many at that demo, the thing that they saw in front of them was just another patent that they can put on the wall. Maybe they can speed up their phone lines a little. Little did they know, the strange amalgamation of germanium and gold was the single greatest invention to have ever come out of the mind of a man. They had just created the first transistor. You may not know exactly what a transistor is, but boy do you know what they do. The transistor is the backbone of every 
computational device we have in the mono world. Before we had transistors, we had vacuum tubes, which could achieve similar results to the transistor, but were very much limited by their size. A vacuum tube could be a couple inches in width and a couple more inches tall. A modern day transistor does not measure its size in inches, however, instead in atoms. In case you're wondering, we've been able to shrink them down to about five atoms wide. In your cell phone, there can be anywhere from 15 to 20 billion transistors. The ability to fit so much computational power in such a small form factor is what allowed technology advancements to skyrocket out of control. In the world of follow-up, they didn't get the transistor in 1947. They didn't get it until the 2020s. They were stuck with vacuum tubes all that time. Just as they were trapped in the technology of the 1950s, they were stuck in that culture. 1947, the invention of the transistor is where many like to draw the line and claim that the divergence occurred. But that's not good enough. Like I said before, all it takes is one single event that differs between our two timelines for a new divergent point to be found. As we progress further back in time, we don't have to travel far to hit our next major world event. In August of 1945, the United States dropped two nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Although this occurs in both timelines, the reactions are different. It may not be evident right away, but a fear is born in our world that does not permeate as deeply on the other side of the screen. Nuclear energy is roughly 8,000 times more efficient than fossil fuels. Keeping that in mind, there are fewer than 100 nuclear power plants in the country, and even with this incredibly small subset of plants, about 20% of the energy produced in the United States is generated from the atom. Compare that to the Massachusetts Commonwealth, where there's a fusion generator in the basement of almost every building. Although the first ever use of atomic weapons would be a very interesting place for our two timelines to diverge, we're not quite there yet. There are two drinks that the people of Fallout have been enjoying all along this ride that we have not had the pleasure of trying in our world. That being Vim and Sunset Sarsaparilla. Vim is slightly newer, coming to the world in 1931, as opposed to 1918 when Sunset Sarsaparilla hits the scene. At this point, our two timelines are practically identical. Maybe the food in your fridge is arranged slightly different, or your commute to work is a little longer due to some accident somewhere. But the day-to-day -day life of every single person is basically the same. There are still differences, however, but I think we've finally reached the cause. In Fallout 4, we can come across quite a dysfunctional family in Boston. Their house is far nicer and neater than just about anything else we've experienced in the wasteland, and they all appear to be quite well studied. As you complete your quest for them, you learn that they're a fair bit older than they appear, as the youngest of them was actually born sometime in the 19th century. The patriarch is Lorenzo Cabot, and he's actually currently locked in a secure containment room within the basement of the local asylum. He was placed there by his family a long time ago, but that doesn't really matter right now. What's important is what Lorenzo did 393 years ago. Cabot was an explorer with a hankering for adventure. In the year 1894, he sets off on another one of his quests to explore the Arabian Peninsula. He hopes to find the ancient city of Ubar, which he believes to have been lost to the sands of time. However, the man who sets out on that journey is not the same one who comes home. He finds something in that desert. In the ruins of a destroyed city, he uncovers an artifact in the shape of a crown. Curiosity gets the best of him, and he places it on his head, where he's gifted knowledge of the civilization that had left it there. He orders the ruins to be burned, so no others can find what he had just uncovered, and he returns home. After landing back in the States, he places the crown back on, and starts to notice other strange effects. He's become stronger, and appears to have developed some form of telekinesis. Time seems to have forgotten about the old adventure, as he has also stopped aging. The crown has functionally been locked to his head, as removing it causes immense pain, and his mental state has become crazed. He goes on to commit several heinous crimes, which should have surely ended him on death row. Lucky for him, his family was quite powerful, and they were able to negotiate a deal. Lorenzo was to be locked up, ordered to live out his days in Parsons State Insane Asylum. Even though Lorenzo's body was sealed away, that doesn't mean his influence over the world ceased. The crown gives him immense powers that we have probably not even witnessed half of. The only reason we are even given the chance of meeting Cabot is that a group of raiders is attempting to break him out of his cage. He organizes breakout from inside the cell, 
and moved this group of raiders to attack without even speaking to them. He did it with just the crown. The question does arise, well, if it's the artifact's fault, how did it get there? And that must be the true divergence. In Fallout 3, we find aliens that have been interacting with the world way before Lorenzo Cabot. Won't they push things back? The fact is, we can't actually be sure that these events are not also occurring in our world. There may also be a powerful artifact buried in the ruins in the Middle East, but nobody's found it yet. It's the uncovering of the crown by Lorenzo that puts them off course to the world that we have come to play. Even in Parsons Asylum, Lorenzo has been shifting the world around him for hundreds of years. He might not be personally responsible for the delay in the invention of the transistor, but he had his hand in it. He was not exactly the cause of the United States faster advanced to space, but he played a role in it. He may not be 100% responsible for nukes to be flying in October 2077, but it's still his 